Since the dawn of time, humans have been wondering, are we alone in this universe? And we have done countless experiments to try and find extraterrestrial civilization or life out there. We've sent, we've sent rovers over to Mars. We've sent satellites into the far reaches of space. We've sent wave signals out to see if anyone receives them and if anyone pings something back. And as we have been told thus far, we've had nothing. That we are all alone in this vast, vast, ever-expanding universe. But is that necessarily true? Well, Professor Simon Holland doesn't seem to think so. Now, you may recognize the name Professor Simon Holland because he was the one that kind of whistle blew that we had received contact back in 2019 from um, um, an unknown alien civilization. That has thus far been unconfirmed, but the things that he brought to light were definitely very valid points brought to bring into question. Now, Professor Simon Holland, he, he has not stopped his insane rampage of bringing us the truth. And he has recently uploaded two videos in a two-part kind of segment where he talks about how SETI, yes, the SETI that set up the organization very recently, found extraterrestrial life and how an alien image was also sent via these wavelengths and things like this. And trust me, this when I watched it, at first I was dubious, but as I got through the video, my jaw like just slowly like lowered with every moment that he spoke. It was absolutely incredible. Now, before I get into the video, obviously I am going to be using the content from um, Professor Simon Holland. So please, if you haven't already, go and check out his YouTube channel. It's definitely worth a watch. He is very scientific, very mathematical. You know, he the way that he describes things is so much better than I could possibly ever do. So credit where credit's due. Go and check him out. Go and subscribe to his channel. It's, it's going to be well worth your time. Anyway, this is part one, and it is titled SETI Found ET Prof Simon. All right, strap yourselves in. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Let's go. You and your computer probably found the best source and evidence of extraterrestrials back in the 1990s. Remember this? This is called SETI at home. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I was born in 1998, December of 1990, so I was technically a 99 baby. I have no idea what this is. I've never seen this before until this video. Like, this, this even boggled my mind that this was capable back then, and you, you can see how quite a primitive it is compared to the technology we've got nowadays. But anyway, sorry to all the boomers that I've offended. Moving on. The idea was to crowdsource searching for a signal because at the time SETI and universities had very limited computing power. Imagine if you could get everybody to search through data on their home computer. And today Wiley and I have been told that 18 ET sources were found by you in the 1990s in now just before we carry on i'm not going to pause it the whole way through i promise i know people get upset with that but we just talk about how he managed to get his cat to mew on cue that was incredible in a novel way let me explain so what is seti well it's a search for extraterrestrial intelligence but they had very narrow parameter drake and sagan who set seti up said it was impossible to look at every signal so they narrowed the search down to the hydrogen band because they reckoned the aliens would know that we could see hydrogen vibrations and they could see it and they ignored the rest the reason they ignored the rest is they didn't have the time and the computing power to look at signals everywhere. You have to understand that a telescope like Arecibo or Green Bank or other big telescopes all over the world can potentially get frequencies from the entire universe as that telescope passes the area of the sky as the Earth rotates. Now that's obviously what we're starting to see now with, you know, not just on the search for extraterrestrial life, but also just trying to understand how our universe works. We see you know the wavelengths and how like as the earth spins on its axis how it picks up the different bands and things like this it's, it's absolutely mind-boggling but there's no way you can analyze the data and what would you be looking for that's where seti at home came up with a brilliant idea 
they could look at the wide band big frequency recording, say from Arecibo, and get your home PC as a screensaver to look for the signal. But what signal? And that's where it all becomes very secret. If you actually search the results of SETI at home, they say nothing was found. But that's not true. This is where it gets proper juicy and I'm not going to use the whole video because you know I want to maintain some of its integrity for you guys to go and check out so there's some value for you to go in over to Simon's channel but um you know the, the 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 idea like I don't know why it's not being done today the idea that we've got this many truth seekers out there you know people wanting to find and expose the truth find out if there's actually something out there you know instead of just relying on government sources you know to have the idea of just being like well we've not got the capabilities to do it ourselves on our own but we've got the capability to build a program that everybody can use on their home PCs, which can also, you know, collate data, send it over to us, and we can put a bigger picture together. That's just mind boggling. Like, if that was capable in the 90s, imagine what would be capable today if we were to do that. Like, it, it literally, like, you don't need to depend on these independent sources then. You could literally just depend on yourself. Crazy stuff, I know. To get behind that secret and to reveal what was found, you have to look at two counterintuitive weird things. First of all, you have to understand open source architecture. And secondly, you have to understand Italian mathematics. So SETI at Home needed managing. And it was managed by Berkeley University using a wonderfully named system, Boink. And the guys that set up Boink wanted it to be open source. Anybody can access the data and anybody can mess with the software. There was nothing hidden. See, I know I said I wouldn't pause it, but I feel like there's so many points to kind of talk about here. This is the kind of thing that, you know, it's just transparent. If everything was this transparent, there wouldn't be the need for these conspiracies that people come up with, you know, I wouldn't be reporting on half of the things that I come like that I do because they wouldn't be these conspiracies to try and seek the truth they would be you know they would just be like null and voided because the data would be there for open source for anyone to go and check out like that is why is that not standard practice they'd written a little algorithm that people could search at home for SETI's idea of what a signal could look like but you in Transylvania or Italy or Basingstoke could get people using this screensaver software at home to do different searches. And that's why the US SETI organization say nothing was found. They looked in the wrong place. Now, I'm not gonna go over the other SETIs and other things like this because I feel like the you know, I, I want to, again, maintain that integrity for this video so you can go and check that out. But we're going to fast forward to what was found. So basically, you know, the other SETIs in a nutshell was just, you know, the other programs that were running and stuff. But this is what was found. Aliens could parse out of the big data because so much of it was repeated. The signal of ET. And here's what they did and what they found. Brilliant Italian mathematicians worked out that as the distant alien possible ET technology passed Arecibo or Earth, it would be like this, the Doppler effect of a siren passing you. We've all heard that pitch change as the siren approaches and the decrease in pitch as it goes away. That's called the Doppler effect. So rather than looking for, hello, I'm here, ET blasting out a big radio signal, what they did is took the two million PARS data from SETI home and looked for Doppler shift. If you could hear any signal that goes boo, Ooh. As the Earth rotated, it meant it was coming from one unique point source. It wasn't background noise. You would only get a Doppler shift 
from a single siren. If you had sirens everywhere, you would never hear that pitch increase and decrease. It would be lost. But the distinctive sound of the Doppler going up and then down, even if you couldn't hear the signal, would indicate a point source, possibly of an ET with technological tools. Why is this not with the why? The, the what? Like, do you know how like mad that is? Someone thought that that was an idea, and when you see the proof of what comes next and how this simple change and this simple thing to look for, as opposed to looking for a, a sudden shift in radio frequency, how it completely changed the game. Because, oh man, it is mad. It is mad. That's what they did. By searching in a way that SETI US weren't looking at, the Italians found 18 Doppler shifts from unique point sources in our galaxy. Who are they? Where are they? And what are they saying? What happened next changed human history. In my next film, I will tell you about the billions of euros that are being spent in 2024 to try and communicate with ET. So if you had... Now, obviously, we're going to go straight into my part two, no messing about. But can we just talk about for a fact, there are billions and billions of dollars and euros being spent on trying to communicate with ET. The government would like, you know, in their most recent Arrow report, for example, obviously, this is the Italian um, equivalent. But, you know, we've had Arrow and we've had the Pentagon's um, report recently. And I'm going to refer to that a lot because, you know, they went on to say there are no aliens. Aliens don't exist. We don't have any proof of life and proof of extraterrestrial beings and proof of ufo craft on this planet or to come in contact with it then why are billions of euros being spent this year to try and communicate with them if there's no proof of it why all that why is where's all that money going is it just a waste is it are we oh is it like kicking a ball against a wall just like nothing's gonna happen are we just shouting into an empty vast and you know expecting an echo the math and mathing guys the math is not mathing right we're gonna go straight into part two because uh you thought part one was juicy no You've got nothing on part two. Let's get it. Hey, welcome back. You have asked some brilliant questions. Have we really found evidence of ET? What are they saying? How, why, where, and when is all this being funded? And best question of all, where's the proof? So today, join me on a really deep dive into looking at the facts. Is this actually true? What's going on? So if you're seeing this film first, you need to go back and watch part one, where I was told that SETI at Home, a piece of software which you probably ran on your computer as a screensaver, actually found 18 extraterrestrial technological signals, probably back in the early 2000s. But none of that is new. It's happened before. Meet Jocelyn Bell. Jocelyn was a graduate student working at the Radio Astronomy Telescope in Cambridge. One day with this field of bean poles, she found a repeating mechanical signal. She told her superior, the project leader, Dr. Hewish, and he thought it might be LGM, Little Green Men. It was an amazing discovery and it really put the willy up the Cambridge radio astronomy team. They went behind closed doors with men from the ministry, men from the university, men from the... and no women. Jocelyn, who found the signal, was excluded. While the suit... Can we just talk about how messed up society was back then? Like, this woman literally found these radio frequencies with zero credit and was not allowed to then participate in the further experimentation or like looking into this justice for her justice for her no like been off the men she found it men were arseholes back this gentleman in cambridge were discussing how to reveal to the world or if we should reveal to the world that we found little green men jocelyn bell went back to the now vacant radio telescope and used a fantastic piece of logic. She figured out if the pulsar that she found was unique, it was probably an alien civilization. 
If the same type of signal was all over the visible universe, it was probably a natural phenomenon. So she went and switched it all on and found another one. Eventually, the men in suits came out of their meeting and Jocelyn said, there's more than one. And finding another in a different part of our universe meant it was unlikely to be alien. They widened their search and after a few weeks, a few months, they found over 15 of these sources. Jocelyn's professor, Hewish, went on to win a Nobel Prize for Jocelyn's discovery of pulsars. These See, that, that kind of stuff winds me up. But can we also just talk about the fact that what if, yes, you, you found 15, right? You found 15, brilliant, amazing. Could be natural phenomena that, that would back up your, your, uh, your claims. But what if it wasn't? What if those 15 were 15, 14 other or 15 other um, civilizations? in an ever-expanding universe with billions and trillions of stars and galaxies and planets to find 15 is literally a drop in the ocean food for thought are collapsed stars that rotate and send out a lighthouse beam and we hear them as woof woof now they're all over the universe they rotate at different speeds but they are the same type. But that's not what SETI at home found. They did not find a source from a star. They found a technological signal from a planet orbiting a distant star in our galaxy. That's very different. Now, we went over the Doppler effect in, obviously, part one of this video, so we don't need to go over it again, and it kind of rehashes the uh, similar points and, um, you know, kind of... Uh, I, I don't I don't want to take away from the video, so, you know, again, there's now reason for you to go and watch part two. But, why now? Like, the question is, we've known this since the 1990s, all right? SETI at home comes out, people have got it on their screensavers, amazing. You know, SETI at home dies out, clearly, because I've never heard of it until now. And, you know, it dies out alongside all the data that it's got. So why has it taken a further 34 years for it to become a thing? Why is, why is it now that we're learning about this? This man knows the answer. So trying to be a good journalist and digging into stuff for you and to answer the question, is this real? Look at this funding. The source of this information told me about this billion dollar funding by the EU to build network telescopes. SKA, square kilometer arrays and low frequency telescopes are all being networked together to share their data for maybe one purpose. So that, of course, raises the next obvious question. With all these hundreds of people, even cleaning ladies working at telescopes in South Africa, Namibia, Australia, Holland, Manchester, and Germany, why doesn't the cleaning lady find a scrap of paper going, today we search for aliens and tell the world about it? So that's a great question. Why am I only hearing from it, and why me, from this person who's very involved in the funding for joining telescopes together? And he said this, it was just the same as Jocelyn Bell and Little Green Men. You don't blab about it until you've got proof. But there was enough evidence to get EU, massively rich organization, to fund this global project. So for that to be the case, right, you must have some significant proof for the EU to dip their hands in their pockets and whip out 95 billion euros to fund this program. There must be something absolutely significant out there, proof-wise, that you presented to the EU to be like, look, there's something, and these guys get all excited and they're like, 
is 95 billion euros. Go and do your thing. But th th if you presented nothing, if you turned up and you were like, I think this is what the case is, they'd be like, no, nah, we're not funding that off of, a, uh, off of a thought. No, absolutely not. If you go to them and you're like, here's the proof of X, Y, and Z, here's what we found, shit gets a bit different. Anyway. But run by the EU, not run by the Americans. Um, why? You'd imagine American scientists and governments would know all about this. So any government proving ET exists, maybe even communicating with them or getting some information from them, would be light years ahead of their competitors. So in a modern space race, talking to ET first would be very desirable. Why aren't the Americans doing it? Very interesting question. I keep on hearing the same answer. Science in America is very open-minded. Scientists in radio telescopes like Green Bank and all the other big facilities in the United States would love to be doing this, but they get funded by rather strange people in US government. And this goes back to the UFO UAP story. I keep hearing the upper echelon Pentagon and government funders and lobby groups are rather fundamentally Christian, much more than Europe is. And they worry that UFOs, UAP and aliens are devils and angels. A very small number of very important people in the United States, not probably the scientists, are actually stopping research into UAP, UFO and searching for aliens because they worry it would undermine their fundamental religion that's and i i don't like to touch on religion because you know it's a very sensitive topic for people but considering the vatican i know the vatican's catholic and this is um you know a, a christian kind of ideal um idealist thought process but that's pretty crazy because especially the vatican coming out recently and kind of changing their ideology to as opposed to just human beings being these sentient beings and creations of god they've now accepted like non-human intelligence aka extraterrestrials so you know could that change things if for example um you know other faiths and religions i know like catholicism um you know church of england christianity and all the rest of it very they're quite similar in how they you know do things and what they believe in but the, the practices are a bit different um but regardless maybe with these sudden these new sudden changes things could be opened up and these programs could also be opened up i don't know it's it's a very interesting thought but just look at this this is a list of the organizations the countries the big business and the money involved in eu doing a major project it could be just the EU spending money. They like big science like CERN and Inter, the fusion project. So on your behalf, I asked the obvious question. What have they found? Man. This is the intriguing piece of information that I can share with you to close this film. They found modulation. They found a signal. Now, first of all, they found a planet buzzing with RF energy. Imagine you had a transistor radio on the moon and you were listening to the Earth. There would be thousands of radio stations and TV and military and Wi-Fi and phone networks. It would be very difficult to resolve anything. All that you would know is that the Earth is very technologically based. But actually hearing an individual signal, even Radio Luxembourg would be very hard from say the moon with a radio. But using this wide field global network funded by the EU, my source tells me they've resolved some signals. <laughs> That's fucking exciting, isn't it? He's telling me that they found discernible, unique information encoded in the global ET signal. What is it, says I? Decoding what they have found is a big part of this project. What he was prepared to say is their pictures, their data. What exactly alien ET pictures would look like is really fascinating. I hope what I've told you today 
We got sent a GIF. We've been sent GIFs. No, it's not a GIF. It's an image. But what the? This completely blows the lid off of everything that we know so far. And it completely, you know, it undoes this whole... Well, to be fair, it doesn't really undo the, the whole Arrow Pentagon report because the USA is not involved. This is all to do with the EU. Um, but and other, you know, like European things like... I know that Britain's not part of... Or the UK, sorry, is not part of um, the EU. But Manchester University was a part of the, the funding program alongside other British, um, you know... Uh, uh, I guess fundies. Let's have a little look. We've got Spain, Latvia. Um, I did see Manchester in here somewhere. There it is, Manchester. So we've also got China in here. Shall so we've got China. They're not part of the EU. South Africa is not part of the EU. They're in there as well. Um, you know this is huge. Ninety-five billion euros, and we found this a potential technological advanced planet that sent pictures. Pictures. Not just like a, hello, how are you? They sent like a little gif. They sent a little waving emoji. They are, this is amazing. This is absolutely mind boggling. I mean, Professor Simon How uh, Holland, go and check him out, please. He was the guy, the last time I got this excited on a video, it was because of this guy once again, because we found back in 2019, bloody conversation that was had with another um, with another planet. This could be the same planet, potentially. There's no links or correlations or not even you know, that wasn't even, like, suggested, but that's just where my mind went. But imagine the absolute scenes. This is crazy stuff, guys. Get down in the comments right now. What do you think on this? Let me know, please. While you're down there, please jump together the hell out that like button if you have enjoyed this video. Subscribe to this channel. Tick on my little bell so you get notified whenever we upload. Go and subscribe to Professor Simon Holland. And uh, until next time, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this one. I cannot wait to see you in the next one, and we'll speak to you later. Peace.